trail the heat, imagine how your lawn feels. What about you? In this video, we're going to show you how to stop making common water mistakes and instead keep your lawn green and healthy during a heat wave and also save money. Let's go. The first and most obvious thing to tell if your lawn needs water is just to have a visual inspection. There are indicators around your garden, like telltale signs of plants starting to wilt, and that is a sign that your lawn will probably need to be watered. We will be checking out different sprinklers to help you choose the right one for your garden. By following some simple tricks, you can not only save money, but you can save water and reduce your water bills significantly. Now, to get rid of the elephant in the room, some people will be saying that you don't need to water your lawn. And while that is true, your lawn will go dormant and it'll eventually come back. If you want to keep your lawn nice and green during a heat wave, then follow these tips. I'm gonna show you a really easy way to tell how your lawn needs to be watered, apart from the obvious of looking around your garden for plants to see if they're wilting. Now, if you're enjoying this, make sure to hit me a like down below and subscribe if you're new to the channel. So we're gonna take this simple tool, just a screwdriver. I'm gonna show you a screwdriver test. You could use a screwdriver, you could use a knife, you could use a pencil. An easy test to find out if your lawn needs to be watered is just to take a screwdriver or a pencil and push it into the ground. If it's hard to push into the ground, if it comes out all dirty, then generally the lawn needs to be watered. Another easy way to tell that your lawn needs to be watered is if you walk across the lawn and if your footprints don't spring back up, then chances are it's going to need to be watered. Come Billy. This next tip is particularly useful if you live in an area that has regular hosepipe bands to use the water off your roof and collect it in a water butt and then you can use that on your lawn and around your garden. A common mistake most people make is the water of their lawn every day. Now, obviously there are exceptions to that. Like this is new grass here. You'd want to keep this watered on a daily basis. However, for most lawns, you only want to be using a sprinkler every two to three days at the very most. If on the other hand, you water every two to three days, you're getting the water to soak further down into the soil. You're not losing as much water from evaporation and also you're encouraging the grass plants to grow nice deep roots. The best times to water your lawn is first thing in the morning. What do I mean by that? Before you get out of bed, 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. is the best time to water your lawn. During the day, you lose a lot of water from evaporation. You water your lawn during the day, but the minute we're filming this in the middle of the day, and a lot of it's just gonna evaporate it off. If you water your lawn late at night, you risk diseases or creating the conditions for diseases such as red thread to come in and attack your lawn. Now don't worry, I know you're watching this video and you're saying, I'm not getting up at 5 a.m. To, wa to water my lawn. Don't worry, we've got you covered. I'm gonna show you a trick that'll help you water your lawn early in the morning. An easy way to conserve water if you want to cut your grass is to use a motion plug or to take the grass box off the lawnmower. We do this as it helps the lawn retain moisture as the grass land on top of the surface helps keep the water in and any moisture that's in those grass blades gets returned back down into the lawn. Another easy tip to conserve water with your lawnmower is to raise the height of cut. This fork, a fork or aeration is really good because it keeps the soil profile open and it encourages the grass plants to go deep down into the lawn. And then whenever you hit a dry spell, the plants have a better root system to draw the water up from the top. Now, the next thing we're gonna get onto is how to actually water the lawn and choosing the right sprinkler for your lawn. So let's go and do that now. Welcome to the workshop for Jason's Tool Tips. Today we're going to be going over the sprinklers that we've got to try out today. Just to quickly go through the uh, sprinklers that we have today before we show you them in action, we have the Oslocating one, which is for more square gardens, the Pulse, which is for larger gardens, uh, the small round one, which is for round gardens, 
this one that looks like a, a fancy oscillating one which we're here to work out what it does and then your budget cheap and cheerful sort of one just before we test these sprinklers just so you know these were all brought for under 25 pounds off amazon uh, the links will be down below the pulsing one which is for larger gardens the next one we have from hose lock is for round gardens As you can see, it is putting more of a, a semicircle out, which is not pushing the water all the way into all the corners. The option we have this on now is good for small spaces. This is the oslocating one for square slash rectangular gardens. Now it's time for the budget one. Now to find out what this one does. This here alters the flow of the water. We've got this here alters the, the tilt of the, of the spray. And then these little divide, these little tabs here alter the spray pattern. With the shade, you can't really see the spray pattern. So we'll take them in the yard to show you. We've brought the sprinklers into the yard here to see if we can show you the actual spray pan. As you can see here, the spray pattern is quite wide, but with a little bit of adjustment on here, we can bring that spray pattern in. Uh, this one we've got on the, uh, the half moon set in there which will uh, simulate spraying just half of a round garden. Now, if you wanted to do more of the garden, you could uh, change it by twisting this bit here to the spray pattern, which would cover the, the whole area. We're onto the budget one. There's no adjustment for this. As you can see on the floor here, the spray pattern is actually quite a big gap from the device to where the water actually lands. I'd say you're probably looking around eight feet there. Now to the old favorite, oslocating one. With the oslocating one, you can see that it covers a good area and also covers where it's actually sitting on the ground as well. Now to test the pulsating one, we haven't got it set up to sweep just because we're in a narrow space. Now, a couple of tips to getting the right amount of water onto your garden. If you can get an empty tin of tuna, put it under where the water's falling. Once the water reaches to the top of the tin, move your sprinkler on. And if you want to water your garden before your alarm clock goes off in the morning, here's another tip. Before I show you how to get the sprinkler going before your alarm clock goes off, don't forget to smash that like button. Here we have a water timer which screws onto your tap and then the hose clips into the bottom of it. That's us all set up to beat the alarm clock. If you've enjoyed this video on watering your lawn, I want to find out how to fill in humps and bumps on your lawn. Watch this video next, now.